In my last video, I talked about Apple's potential calls when it comes to the Apple Watch and how it might spread to their other projects and eventually lead Apple to losing its command in several leading key technological markets. But what about the opposite? Like some practical ways Apple might recenter itself onto a more fruitful path, something more positive. Last video, I talked about Apple's current standing being akin to the first two acts of the tortoise and the hare. Apple, much like the titular hare, are, in my opinion, resting in their evident superiority over the competitors. But unlike the hare, who loses the race due to its own arrogance, Apple is still clearly in the lead when it comes to certain product lines, and there's no telling when they might be passed up by competitors in markets such as AirPods or Apple Watch. But that is exactly why they can't fall asleep at the wheel like the hare did, lest they suffer the same fate. So where do we start to unpack this issue? Shall we start with Apple's near incessant need for their products to be so distinct and prestigious? They're unwilling to offer something as simple as black AirPods or a black Apple Watch Ultra. The statement may seem silly, but why does it matter what color your $300 headphones are? And to be fair, I might say the same if Apple didn't demonstrate they keep the AirPods the same color so that anyone will recognize them from afar. And you start to see where this rigid thinking may come from might bite them in the butt. Right now, AirPods are so good that they don't have to offer different colors to justify you buying them over a different competitor. But notice how the AirPods Maxes did have certain colors. Could it be because the Maxes were priced so high, Apple wasn't sure if anyone would buy them over something like the Sony or the Bose over ear headphones? But what if one of the regular in-ear AirPods competitors does catch up to them? Then a simple, different color option which the other competitors already offer may be the only thing that tips the scales in the competitor's favor. This need for prestige doesn't just affect simple cosmetics though. So many of Apple's newest products are made with very expensive materials that make their products beautiful and sleek, yes, but also much more expensive to make and therefore much more expensive for potential buyers to buy. Not to mention how heavy these materials make their wearables, such as Vision Pro or AirPods Max. Sorry, but when you charge $3,500 for a fancy AR headset, all of the fancy materials in the world won't stop people from just buying a MetaQuest to play dumb games on it and watch stuff. So what's the solution to this? Clearly now Apple doesn't consider that there are any disadvantages with their current business model. But how long will that last? Do they open themselves up to the possibility of lowering their brand prestige so that other products can be made with more affordable materials? And do they recognize that maybe it's okay if someone can't instantly recognize those pearly white AirPods in your ears? I mean, why are you looking into people's ears anyways? Bros, shame on you. It's sad because so much of Apple's history has them as technological trailblazers. The people at the forefront of progress. I mean, Apple revolutionized so many aspects of the tech world. The watch, AirPods, the mouse, and the click wheel, the multi-touch display. And now it seems that they are content to bask in their own glory. Meanwhile, they jack up prices for products that are increasingly less worth the small fortunes it takes to acquire them. And I get it. Apple has unfortunately locked themselves into the cultural norm of a new iPhone a year keeps the doctor away. So I get that not every iPhone every single year is going to have some huge technological step forward. But while we're waiting for the next big step forward, what can Apple be doing to make the time in between more worth it for the customers whose money has built their empire? And as much as I've been talking about the big changes Apple could and should make, many Apple users' biggest complaints come in the form of smaller issues like OS updates, bug fixes, smoother performance, battery, things like that. Should those things be deprioritized in lieu of massive design changes? Obviously not, but it's worth asking the question. As rumors have been saying, it seems that Apple CEO Tim Cook might be retiring over the next three years. And if that's the case, what will his legacy be? What kind of a company will he be leaving for his successor? And will they be able to fix some of the problems he has left them with. With all of that being said, where do you think Apple is going? What do you think their next steps should be? Many have their opinions and there are a thousand videos out there telling you what they are. But the bottom line is this, 
How long can the hare afford to sleep while the tortoise makes its slow and steady progress towards the finish line? Thanks for watching. I'm Jake. This is Shot on My Phone. Thank you.